is so excited that you're all here today. We have Mary View. She is the head of partnerships at Sankari. Incredible, incredible woman. So glad to have her here today. She's an executive member of Cloud Software Association and Partnership Leaders, where she mentors leaders on how to scale global partner programs and teams. So everyone, please welcome the lovely Mary. Mary, take it away. All right. Thank you, everybody, for having me. Um, I'm just going to see if I could switch some slides here really quickly. And that way I could share with all of you uh, the, the pretty slides I've made. <laughs> uh, let's see here, slideshow. All right. Um, so, so thank you for having me here today, everyone. Uh, it's, it, it's quite the act to follow, especially considering Jared is, is a star over there at Rev Genius. Um, and so, a little bit about why I'm here today, right? Um, if, if all of you or some of you are from New York, I'm sure you've seen these blue signs, question mark out of the blue in the middle of nowhere with an arrow, right? Uh, and really what these signs are is that it's, they're not there at random. It means information is nearby. And, and so for me, I'm really not here by random. <laughs> I, I'm really here because you know, certainly partner strategy is something you should certainly think about uh, if you're not already thinking about it as you're doing product fit uh, motions, right? Um, and so my hope today is certainly to share with you some of the, the trends that I'm certainly seeing in my uh, professional networking communities with my partner peers, as well as to share some of my own experiences, right? And, and hopefully the takeaway is if you haven't thought about partnership strategy during your PMF motion, you should. Um, and if you're already doing it, then then great, right? Uh, I would certainly say continue to invest in it because it will pay back in spades. And so I wanted to kick us off with this slide. Uh, this is a PMF framework. I'm sure many of you recognize this slide, you know, the drunken walk to the product fit, hyper growth and scale. Um, but what I wanted to do was I wanted to overlay partners in this, right? A partner strategy. So to talk a little bit about the partner trends, I'd say like some odd kind of, or even <laughs> four plus years ago, right? Um, some folks call this, hey, you know, the the old school style of partnering or legacy style of partnering, or even just, you know, a lot of the enterprise companies, right? Um, today that have partner ecosystems, you know, they really didn't introduce partner strategy uh, until they were in scale mode. And that, and typically at scale mode, they're like, hey, I, I wanna make more money. I'm gonna go tap some partners to sell my stuff, to build my stuff, et cetera. So, so that was happening kind of, I'd say four years ago, right? I mean, pre-pandemic, et cetera. What is happening today is essentially partners are actually, the partner strategy is actually appearing in the product fit motion, right? Um, and there's a couple of different reasons why. Partners take a long time to, to develop, grow, evolve, right? Um, I mean, think about it. If you're trying to uh, establish a micro version of your company in a partner, I mean, think about how long it took you to, to build and scale your company. Now you have to go and repeat everything in a micro version in a company, not just one company, but 20 companies, 30 companies, 100 companies, 50 companies, uh, you know, 300 companies, right? 1,000 companies. And so to do that, it does take time. And so, so with the, you know, uh, explosion of SaaS and ecosystems and apps, you know, many of the SaaS cloud app companies are essentially investing in partners much earlier during the product fit motion, right? And you might think, hey, why, how would this impact me? I mean, partners don't show up until I need to make money, right? I'm still trying to figure out how to message this, how to sell this, how to, you know, implement this, you know, and, and partners are, you know, probably perhaps not ready for that. Um, well, I challenge you on that, right? So, so this is actually a slide from uh, State of Partner Ecosystem 2022 by Crossbeam. They, they do this Every year, this just came out in March. Uh, this is probably about the third or fourth year that they've done this. And at the top of this chart is that people invest in partnerships and partner strategies 
because, you know, the desire for revenue, right? Certainly everything else is gravy, you know, entry into new markets, churn, uh, market, marketing, right? Being able to co-market and ride the wave of some other established um, tech or SaaS company or product, um, customer satisfaction, right? I mean, heck, sometimes your team can only do so much, you know, being able to add partners to it kind of helps kind of accelerate some of that. And lastly, certainly valuation and share price. While this is kind of the typical reasons why people get into partner strategy investment, uh, what it what this chart doesn't really address is what is the impact if you pull partner strategy into your PMF motion, right? Um, whether you're a sales leader, a marketing leader, a CEO, a CEO, a CTO, you know, you're a leader of your org, if you're an AE or an SDR, right? Partnerships are going to matter. And so um, when it's in the PMF motion, right, what it really does is it certainly helps inform, inform your product roadmap, right? So if your product and engineering team, great, they're ingenious, they had this awesome idea, got you to where you are, now you're trying to like get it to fit in the motion, right? In, in, in the market. It, partners are working on live customers on a daily basis. They see these problems on a daily basis and they become a great feedback loop to help inform your product roadmap to help inform your product and engineering team so that they can work on the right things, work on the things that are faster, create a better UI experience, UI design, user experience, right? Um, item number two, sales motion. When you bring partners earlier into the PMF motion, partners become part of your sales DNA. You eliminate any of that kind of sales friction that you might have further down the road when you're trying to scale, right? Because if, Partners are in your PMF motion. I mean, your 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 AEs, your SDRs will just automatically say, "Hey, partners, help me get to Presidents Club," versus you know, versus having this friction of like, "Why is this? Why is this odd third party trying to take away my deal?" Right. And lastly, item number three, your customer success. You know, while you have an awesome customer success team that is. Uh, implementing innovative customer solutions. Um, partner, think about it. Partners are doing this every day already. And, and partners could essentially help educate even your own customer success team uh, to be even much more innovative, right? Um, you might have a sample set of 40, 50, 100, 200 customers. Partners have had a sample set of 20 years, right? Uh, and that's where partners can certainly, you know, by starting in the PMF motion, Partners can certainly help become a fabric of your customer success. So I share some cool stats. I mean, some, some cool impact points, right? I mean, not just me, right? I wanted to show you that, hey, there are a bunch of companies already investing in a partner strategy early on, seed, series A, series B, et cetera, right? These are just a few of the companies, a few of the peers that I certainly talk to every day. Um, that are already doing that, right? Um, and their leaders, and you know, certainly see the value of having a partner strategy during the PMF motion, because it certainly informs the organization top down, executive level, all the way down to even the field SDR level, right? Uh, as well as field marketing. So a couple of fast facts. Um, I do want to share that. Hey, I'm, you know, I, I'm not just you know sharing other people's data. Uh, these are some of my data points that I've encountered, right? Um, so to think about it, you know, some companies never ever even hit 30% of partner influence ARR in their entire history. And to be able to plant a partner strategy, invest in partner strategy early on in the PMF, you can certainly have a different impact on your business. So I've highlighted three impacts today. One, you know, I've seen you know, either been part of it, built it, frontline, uh, owned it. <laughs> um, and the very first one is essentially, you know, certainly see and owned kind of partner influence AR from 5% revenue mix to 50%. You know, from a Series A company that grew into a Series E company with a $5.7 billion valuation. You know, um, secondly, you know, having worked for 
a company that, you know, was a hundred million dollar AR and then exited to, um, to acquisition, you know, 40 having worked in that company and driving partner influence AR uh, throughout the entire business from 40% to 70% mix. That meant that of that hundred million AR, when we met that threshold, $70 million came from partners, right? Um, that is the impact of that business. And, and it's not just from a lead gen, demand gen perspective, but it's co-marketing, it's customer success, it's expansion, it's um, those partners really helping us position our market fit to even get to that 100 million plus, right? And then lastly, you know, for, for SaaS Series A who say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm nowhere near like 5.7 billion valuation, I'm nowhere near 100 million ARR, I might be, you know, a million or I might be 5 million or 10 million ARR. Introducing a partner strategy during Series A can certainly help inform and actually help create and introduce a new ICP, a new product, a new AR stream, right? Um, and so those are some of the impactful fa you know, facts that I can certainly share with all of you today. Happy to share more. <laughs> um, as I said, these are all kind of like past lives, but happy to share details if, if, you, if you ping me up, right? Um, Okay, so if all of that sounds exciting and that's kind of where you're headed, you want to get to as you're, you know, working on your product market fit, there are a couple of things to consider, right? And, and you don't have to do this alone. Certainly you could bring in, you know, leaders, you could network and have them help give you insights. But these are some partner types to consider as you're thinking about this, right? Um, everything in green is, is, you know, things that drive revenue. Things in blue helps your product and engineering team. Things in black and gray kind of helps you build out that army, that ecosystem of whatever your product is, right? You're trying to build a community. You know, you're always thinking like, hey, I'm building a direct community of my users. But you know what? I guarantee you 50% of those users are your partners or consultants, people who could become your partners, right? So these are all things you want to think about uh, as you think about part of market fit, how do you fit into perhaps places that there might be a gap and how do you accelerate that motion? From there, looking internally, how do you maximize that partner strategy cross-functionally internally, right? Um, I know, I've, you know, talking about partnerships, if you're not a partner leader, that's okay. You might be a sales leader, marketing leader, customer success leader. You might be a leader of any one of these business units. And my point here is essentially, the partner strategy has the ability to impact your business and has the ability to certainly walk, work cross functionally with you to help drive the success of your function, right? I wanna zero in on sales and marketing. Um, I wanna zero in on sales and marketing, right? Sales, you might think, hey, I, you know, why would I, uh, you know, how do I work with partners? Well, you know, you can certainly co-sell with them. They can certainly refer leads and opportunities to you. They can certainly help uh, resell. They can certainly help you with expansion. You don't have to sit in every deal that you close. If you plant a partner there, they'll do the work for you. And they'll come back to you and say, hey, Mary, I've been in this deal for six months. I've implemented them. I've followed them. I've advised them. And we found this new deal, right? And that's where those sorts of value comes in for the salesperson. Beyond that, certainly, you know, we can't be an expert in everything. Partners, a lot of times, they've been in that industry for 20 plus years. Leverage them as a subject matter expert resource, right? Gain kind of confidence from your prospects that you know what you're talking about by bringing a partner to that conversation to really add value. And then lastly, three by three relationships, you know, don't have just a siloed one way conversation with just the one person. Maybe your 20 plus year partner or 10 plus year partner might already have executive level relationships there that they can certainly help advise and introduce and influence. For the marketing team, I mean, you're not alone, right? I mean, think about it. Partners, you know, whether it be consultants or ISVs, you could certainly leverage the clout and the brand equity that partners already bring. Ride that wave, you know, don't, I mean, of course your goal is to build brand equity, to create lead gen, demand gen, 
leverage this rich set of resource to help you accelerate that motion, right? If you're not leveraging it today, you should think about it because it certainly can, could make your job easier, you know? Um, be the host, have the partner create the content, <laughs> that sort of thing. So I hope that kind of gives you just a very quick touch of what maximizing a partner strategy across functionality uh, might look like for your organization. So how do you get started? Partner strategy is, is a top-down initiative, right? And you want to start with your product. You know, what you're selling, your product, is, is interoperability table stakes for you? Are you entering a new market? Does that product require services? Does it require advisory? Does it require, you know, help to get to go live, right? Understand the value that your product could have and the role that partners could play in your product, right? And once you understand that, then you can start to then say, hey, I'm going to go after this type of partner. And I kid you not, even low-code, no-code product, products, right, <laughs> that requires absolutely no integration or no uh, coding from partners, no billable hours from partners, still leverage partners. Um, and so there's many ways to kind of slice this. So who owns this? Again, like I said, partnership, um, partner strategy is a top-down initiative. The investment um, in a partner leader is, is important for this function, right? Uh, certainly if you're, you're pre-seed, great. Maybe you're not quite ready. Have the CEO, CTO, CPO, C CRO run it, right? Depending on where you think that the most value of your partner uh, strategy is going to play out, right? Um, when you get to kind of a stage where you say, okay, now I'm ready for somebody to run this full thing then you start to look for a partner leader, right? Um, but depending on your product, if it's purely like, if it needs to run across your organization, you, you need it to generate sales for you. You need it to, uh, you know, get you into different marketplaces. You need it to do technology, those sorts of things to be able to make your product valuable and function, you know, across all your customers. You might want that to report to your CEO top down. Uh, if it's purely just, you know, affiliates, referrals, lead gen, channel sales, purely sales, then certainly you want to kind of start to minimize that and, and, and bring it down to, hey, report to the CEO or CRO, right? And then if it's purely a tech play, alliances, you know, we need to partner with Salesforce or HubSpot uh, because that's, you know, where we bet our entire core business on, then, you know, Perhaps maybe and even in that motion, it might be purely kind of tech only. And you want that to refer, you know, re report or dotted line to your CEO, CTO, or CPO, because those pieces require kind of, you know, technical, functional kind of alignment, right? So this is something to think about, right? Um, when you start thinking about that partner leader and where you might want to put them to, to be able to maximize your investment in the partner strategy, it is dependent on your product. Um, and then lastly, get educated, right? So learn from your peers. Maybe you're not quite sure yet to go all out and put out a job rack and say, hey, come and be a partner leader here. Be a VP, be a head of partners. That's okay. You know, reach out to your network of CEOs, your founders, your leaders, your peers, folks that you've seen stand up a partner ecosystem. Folks that you've seen hired on a partner leader, folks that you've seen successful partners, um, they're happy to certainly share, <laughs> even lend their partner person to you to, to give you a brain dump on some things to think about and, you know, some things to figure out, right? Um, talk to your VCs. Your VCs have an entire portfolio of successful customers who say certainly included partner strategy in their in their PMF, in their uh, hyper growth, in their scale, right? And lastly, communities like Rev Genius, certainly, you know, even Rev Genius has 26,000 members. There's bound to be, I, I'd say at minimum 10% uh, of the community that is familiar with working with partners, uh, is leading partner strategy, is, you know, our CEOs, uh, VP of marketing, CMOs, 
that are collaborating with their partner, uh, with their partner counterparts. So, so the education, like educate yourself. And, and then, you know, from there, certainly, you know, decide when you're going to take that next step to bring in partner strategy into your PMF motion. Right. Um, so that's all I had. Um, thank you very much. You can certainly connect with me and all these various different channels. You can find me on, on Rev Genius. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. You can follow me. You can even email me at Syncri. Happy to, to make time to, to chat with you and, and to certainly share more with you. Um, so that is it. I'm going to check to see if there is any questions for me. <laughs> um, okay. So... Uh, from Eleanor, can you give an example of a good case or B2B PMF partnering, please? Um, so I would say examples of good B2B partner, um, a PMF partnering is, is essentially think about like your, your product, right? And I said, Hey, you know, where does your product help you fit? Um, I mean, and, and, and what role does a partner play, right? Um, so that's kind of where you start and you say, hey, your, your product is, you know, it, it could be, um, if we think about like what happened with with Fivetran and Snowflake, right? I mean, those are examples of PMF partnering where you've, you've got a, a, a bigger ISV and you perhaps are the function of a smaller um, a new SaaS on the market. You partner with an ISV that has a niche, a niche fit with you, right? Um, a lot of times people say, hey, it's an ancillary fit, right? But in that ancillary fit is, is where you kind of get to ride the wave. Uh, even in the example of Syncery, right? Uh, when I think about Syncery, um, in the time that I've spent at Syncery, right, we, we partner with HubSpot. Um, and in that HubSpot partnering, right, it enabled us to certainly grow in less than six months, you know, from three mutual HubSpot customers to over 50 plus mutual HubSpot customers, right? And, and that's a, a PMF fit where we say, hey, where there's a gap, right? And it might be between two partners or it might be between three partners, um, and in the two partners, there's Syncree and HubSpot, right? There's a niche fit. Uh, we add a third layer partner to it where that partner becomes a vehicle, right? That partner might be an OEM. That partner might be a consultant. That partner might be um, somebody who's on the ground, who's working with HubSpot customers or Syncree customers who say, hey, if we brought these two technologies to that together, we help the customer achieve so much more. In, in which case... That was exactly what happened, right? Um, so, so in that use case, I mean, in six months, you know, just in being a Series A company, we were able to grow our our um, adoption from five from three customers to fifty customers, just by partnering with a, with a technology partner um, who had a subset of customers that certainly found value in our joint value proposition, right? Those scenarios typically, um, you know, certainly you'll see it in the sales team when you're talking to customers, you'll see it in the field um, with marketing when people give you fake feedback about like, hey, you know what you do, my product and the things I'm using, it's missing these things, but I think you could help me here. And, and that's where you take that piece and you extrapolate it across uh, and, a partnership, right? And when you add a partner leader to that, then that partner leader helped grease the wheels, help you set up the, the right marketplaces, the right relationships to how do we amplify this, right? Um, so so that would be just kind of an example. I mean, I kind of went from five trans snowflake to, to like a dial down sink creek, but um, you know, I hope that helpfully answers your question. And you're welcome to hit me up, Eleanor. <laughs> So I, I do want to say um, I just went through the cycle of SAP, like literally three weeks ago, and SAP has completely changed their model. So you should check that out. Um, SAP, 
have since rolled out this SAP open ecosystem that uh, is actually free, right? You don't have to do rev share. It's free. You can participate in it. You can um, pay an, a nominal fee if you need a sandbox to be able to enable your customers. So I would say SAP has come a long way. <laughs> um, but if, if you're thinking that, hey, SAP is still an ecosystem that's important to you, you should recheck that out, right? Um, it's called Open Ecosystem, SAP Eco Open Ecosystem. Um, some good partnership types for, for B2B startups. It really depends on your product, right? Where does your product play, right? Um, if your product... Uh, is playing with SaaS MarTech, you might want to take a look at some of the, the, the stack that your customers uh, typically work with. So a, a good way to come about this list is essentially the first thing I did when I joined Syncery was I went through our entire customer list. I downloaded a customer list of all the active customers, every single deal that ever closed at Syncery. And then I looked at all the different technology that basically um our customers are working with in conjunction with our product right and that informs you where to start because even when you start to say hey i'm going to go and establish some partnerships you want to be able to establish partnerships that are going to be meaningful to your icp to your ideal customer profile right you don't want to just be shooting a bunch of blanks in the dark you want to be able to establish partnerships that are going to have meaning to your sales team to your marketing team to your product team and so the best way to, to start is take your list of customer wins, look at what they're using your product in conjunction with, and start with those partnerships, right? Um, and lowest hanging fruit is always, hey, get in their marketplace, get certified, right? Uh, from there, build enough momentum, get noticed. <laughs> uh, and then once you can certainly get there, when you're noticed, you know, these partners, regardless of of you chasing them down, they're going to say, hey, I want to work with you because 50 of my customers are talking about you, right? Um, that's from an alliance perspective. From a consulting perspective, you want to think about whether or not there's a need, right? Uh, do you need implementation? Do you need uh, services? Do you need referrals, right? I mean, for example, Unbounce, no services, completely self-service. So they have a complete like affiliate referral model, right? Where bunch of marketing agencies refer customers to Unbounce. Um, that's a very kind of simple model, right? Uh, the more complicated your product is, you know, then you might want to start to think about, do I need system integrators? Do I need people to learn my product and build my product and implement my product? Um, and so there's certainly value in that. It just depends on your product. Uh, Nick, so proven good KPI for partnerships. When you're starting out from scratch, it's typically how many, how many folks did I sign? Yeah, how many of them did their first deal, right? If, if you're starting from scratch, it's always, once I sign them, can I get them to do a first deal with me? This is the consulting side. On the channel side, right? Um, how many marketplaces did I get into? How many certifications did I get? How many referrals did I get from the, those marketplaces, right? Um, how many mutual customers did I get to? Um, as you start to evolve that, right, and your, your partner leader will, will typically, you know, have these KPIs as well, then, you know, you start to grow revenue and, and then revenue becomes a key indicator of your KPI. Did, you know, if you saw my stats, my fast stats earlier, um, where I talked about 40, you know, growing a revenue mix 40 to 70%. What that meant is essentially the entire company revenue mix, right, if it's $10 million, $4 million came from partners, seven, you know, $6 million came from direct sales and marketing, et cetera. Uh, growing it to 70 million, uh, growing to 70%, 7 million is now being influenced by partners, 3 million is direct, right? So, so a mature partner ecosystem eventually gets to a point where you can certainly measure purely on revenue or purely on pipeline build. Um, a, an early partner ecosystem is typically on how many partners did I recruit? How many did I activate? Uh, how many events did I do? Because all of those things lead to pipeline, right? Um, what is a good framework to use for partnership review? Quarterly to validate partnerships. Yeah, so this is a great question, Nick. I mean, 
I know we're up on time, so this will be my last question. Otherwise, you guys can hit me up. Um, this is a great question. You typically what you you know when you start off, you might not even need tears. You know, everybody's kind of on a clean slate, but a flat a, a flat footing. Uh, but you, what you want to do is you want to set up tiers to be able to incentivize your partners to do more with you, right? Um, and so when you do that, you might set them based on quantity of deals, quantity of events, uh, quantity of activities, um, quantity of license sold, quantity of license influence, right? Those are all kind of good indicators to help validate that the partnership is actually doing something to meet um, the discounts and the bonuses that you're giving them, right? The margins that you're giving them. Um, I wouldn't say quarterly. I mean, I'd say, you know, uh, half in a year is, is typically where you're validating the, the partnerships. Um, you know, more enterprisey tends to be a year. Uh, earlier startups tends to be a half, as long as you put the framework in place. But it's a little bit of the wild, 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 wild west when you start really early. And it's more of identifying which ones will, will go the long haul with you. Um, usually after your first year, you will then kind of sift out, filter out the ones that are kind of your A players versus your B players and your C players, right? You need all of them. It's okay. Keep all of them. Um, but your A players are the ones that are, are going to certainly meet and exceed your expectations, right? So I hope this session was helpful. Uh, and... Um, if you haven't started thinking about partner strategy, I hope, you know, the, the little bit of knowledge I shared today got you thinking and uh, I welcome all of you to connect with me.